wide stance. Feet a little bit wider than your hips. And we're going to take a deep breath as we plie down into the diaphragm, filling up the lungs, reaching above your head, pushing behind you, big shoulder roll back. Again, deep breath in through the diaphragm. Dropping your head and your neck. 
keep pushing that tailbone up and lengthening the back of your legs. Walk your hands over to the right side. Down. 
think about your tailbone making a circle on the wall behind you. So we're moving down through cow and pressing up through cat, down through cow, and up through cat. Move with your breath. Remember, inhale down and exhale, press up. Inhale down, exhale, press up. You'll notice that that circle travels all the way up the spine to the tip top of the head. And you get this wonderful spiral movement traveling through the spine. Now, if you're not comfortable being on your hands and knees, these are both the cat, the cow, and this big hip circle you can do while you're standing in a chair, standing next to a chair, using a chair. And I'll just show you that real quickly. So you can do that using a chair, standing up, so flat back, Happy puppy. You've got your cow. And you can move forward and back in the chair with your cow with your breath. And then the same for cat. Cow. And then circle. Okay? So just remember that if you are limited uh, as far as getting onto the floor and up again, there are ways that we can modify pretty much all of these stretches for you. So just ask anytime, okay? Let's press back over our heels and reach forward into child's pose. Please feel free to keep your knees open in a V position. I prefer that myself. But you're welcome if you like the knees together. Of course, you can move forward that way. Walk your fingertips forward and drop your head on the mat. You'll feel this between your shoulder blades. And you really just want to breathe deep and you really feel it. Letting your chest reach toward the floor and keep walking those fingertips forward. Of course, if you're standing, this is a good time just to fold over. Fold forward and support yourself on your knees or walk your hands all the way down towards your ankles. Just a great recovery position. You can also use the bed or a chair. I like to use the bed if I'm standing and just kind of fold over onto the bed. You can hold on and really lengthen your back that way. This is a safe position for 
most people to do an extension. Very gentle on your low back. Where some of the um, like the cobra, especially that we're going to move into next, can be kind of difficult for people with limitations in their lumbar spine. We can have them in degenerative discs or bulging discs. You may want to avoid our next move, which is the cobra. So we'll lower ourselves down, and then we'll bring our hands under the shoulders. <coughs> I think I need some water. Just hold that position. Love that sensation, that 
sensation is progress. Just keep telling yourself it's good, it's progress. Moving into our plank. Squeeze your belly. Try to flatten the whole back and the body. I like to add a little bit of a twist to my hips. I always get some good adjustments in my sacroiliac joint and in my um, hip joint. And then lower yourself down. Back to your sphinx and shake it out. Left to right. Megan's cat is stretching with her. I think that's wonderful. Two of them. <laughs> oh, now I see. Right in front of the camera. He was, he was taking a nap, though. He wasn't doing his downward dog. All right, we're gonna move back through those three. At your own pace, I want you to use your breath. So we're going to press forward. And up. Remember, breathe deep and on your exhale, move into your next posture. Just go at your own pace. I like to hold them for 20 seconds minimum, but you just do what feels good for you today. or do your homework 
in this position if you're trying to work on your lateral turnout for ballet or a specific dance style then the best way to do that is to just be in this position uh, and try to allow your body to relax into it as you know frequently as possible this does shorten the piriformis muscle when you're in this position so you know please try to relax that muscle back there while you're in this posture and if it's too much of a stretch just bring your feet up a little bit you know it doesn't have to be intense from here let's lengthen the legs and go ahead and roll over now we get to stretch that muscle the piriformis since we just shortened it let's go ahead and give it some nurturing so on your back, we have our feet on the floor, and we'll bring the right leg, the right ankle over the left knee. Grab onto your left leg, and bring it toward your chest. And that really lines up your left ankle with your left, I mean, sorry, your right ankle with your left shoulder, so opposite foot to shoulder is what we need to do or aim to do to stretch the piriformis muscle on the right side. So the, the foot that is bent across your leg, that's the hip where you're going to feel it. You want to feel that stretch right underneath those gluteal muscles. I'll show you on the side between your femur uh, and your sacroiliac joint. So femur here and sacroiliac joint right back here. That muscle attaches right through there. So right now, I want you to think about breathing in your favorite color into that area, lengthening that performance muscle, opening up the flow of that sciatic nerve that moves right through that muscle. So this is so good if you have any injury to your uh, sacroiliac joint or your lumbar spine that may be causing, you know, some added tension in that piriformis muscle. And often there uh, is pain, sciatic pain, without there being an injury to the uh, spinal region, it could be happening specifically in the piriformis muscle. There could be a spasm there, what we call piriformis syndrome. And it could be squeezing on that sciatic nerve enough to have pain, you know, having sciatica down the leg and heat and numbness and tingling. So this is so good. Good for that piriformis and sciatic nerve. Let's switch to the other side and give it some love. So we're going to bring the left ankle toward the right shoulder. And I'm just wrapping my hands around the back of my right leg, bending my right knee, and pulling the, the set toward my chest. And if you need a little more stretch, just shift your weight over to the right side a bit. You should be feeling this in your left piriformis muscle through here. And sometimes people have a hard time grabbing their leg to pull it in, their um, supporting leg. So you can always just grab onto the, the leg of the hip you want to stretch and bring the knee and the ankle, especially the ankle, toward the opposite shoulder. The more you pull on that ankle, the more you're really going to isolate that piriformis muscle. Pulling it toward This one can also be done in the chair, but you'll have to kind of check out my other videos for that one. I won't take time for it today, but if you have questions about that, just let me know. We're going to reach above our head as we inhale up and exhale down, bringing the elbows down first. Inhale up, exhale, bring the elbows down, let the wrists follow along.
massaging the base of your sacrum, all the connections, the tenderness connections of your gluteal muscles come in right there at the sacrum. So you should feel your weight just moving around that triangular shape of that sacrum at the bottom of your spine. Now bring the soles of your feet together and grab the outsides of your feet and press your feet up, the soles of your feet up toward the ceiling. If you can't reach the outside of your foot, that's fine. Just reach the outside of your leg somewhere, wherever that feels good to you. If you can grab onto those feet, you can really think about pulling with your biceps, you know, pull down toward the floor. You're in a chair-like position here. As you exhale, we're going to lengthen the left hamstring, the left leg toward the outside wall, and bring the right toe toward your chin. So this is our happy baby, and we're just exploring our range of motion. I'm going to be a bit one-sided today, it looks like. <laughs> Let me see if I can scooch over a little bit. Just keep exploring your range of motion, and just use the, the changing, the shifting of your weight to move you from side to side. You shouldn't feel like you're having to move yourself. You just really start to move as you fold that leg in, you return to center. And as you unfold the other leg, that rocks you over. So we fold them in, and then we fold them out. Folding back in, folding out. Just go to where it's you know comfortable for you. You'll notice each time you go a little bit further, just keep exploring. that 
you do any of these twists. But we're going to bring the feet to the mat and drop the knees over to the left. Keeping the palms on the floor and both shoulders on the floor.
So if you want to reach up, you can certainly increase that stretch by reaching up and a bit behind you. You can use both hands if you want. And we're going to push back. Press the hips over your heel. I like to sit on my heel because my hamstrings need a little extra stretch. And this lifts your hips up off of the ground just a little bit and increases that stretch. Then you just reach forward. If you prefer to have your legs in a figure four, if you're not comfortable sitting on your heel, uh, sometimes if you're on a hard floor, that's really not comfortable on the top of your foot. So being in a figure four is absolutely fine. My hamstrings are just really always, they have been tight for so long, like my whole life. So I just, I try to stretch them as much, much as possible. And in this series of stretches that we do in Limber Up, we stretch them at least three times very thoroughly. Uh, we start stretching them in the windmill that we did at the beginning, and then in the downward dog position that we did, and then again in our figure four. It's really important to hold your stretches and to give it time for those muscle fibers to lengthen. There's a chemical reaction that occurs, and if you don't wait long enough for that to happen, those muscle fibers will not lengthen. Uh, and sometimes if you push, push it, it can tear. And then that just causes you to have even less flexibility because you build this scar tissue. I like to give it a little heat and warmth, a little friction with my hand. You can also compress the hamstrings against your quadricep muscle while you're stretching it. That feels so good. Let's shift the weight forward and step up and extend the opposite leg back. Lining up the hands with the front foot, the knee should be over the ankle, and you drop the hip down toward the floor.
here, go ahead and stretch our neck. It's a comfy spot to stretch next. So we're going to sit on our hands to stabilize the shoulders. Lifting up from the tip top of the head. Breathing deep into the diaphragm. Exhale, bring the ear, the right ear to the right shoulder. You should feel that down the left neck. And if you want to add just a little bit of plucking with your right hand, you can do that. So we're still sitting on the left because that really stabilizes the shoulder and allows us to stretch all these muscles. And then using the cup of your hand, kind of in a C shape, you're just taking, hooking those fingertips in, in the back of the trapezius and levator scapula muscle and rolling forward over the scalenes. That feels so good. Then bring the chin to the right shoulder. And if you need a little bit more stretch on this one, just use the weight of your right arm. You're going to feel that rather than here, you're gonna feel it down the back of the neck and into the top of your scapula. It's the levator scapula muscle. It gets really tight from looking down. It's holding your head, for keeping it from going, dropping forward. So when you're looking down, it's working really hard back there. And when it gets tight, uh, along with some of your other cervical muscles, you can really get some bad tension headaches. So these are good stretches to breathe deep into. And open up the neck and relieve those headaches. We'll interlock the fingers, put them behind the head, and you can use that as a weight on the back of your head. You don't want to pull your neck or your head down, just use the weight of your hands and your arms. Drop your elbows down and drop your chin to your chest. Good. 
So let's see what we have time for. I think I'd like to stretch the forearms, but also a couple more for the legs. Oh yeah, we're making, well, I guess we do end at seven these days now, huh? <laughs> so let's stretch the hands if you have time for it. And um, we will be off to the shop for tonight. So whether you're sitting or on the floor, take an opportunity to lengthen your arm. And palm up, you're going to grab those fingers and pull them towards your body. If you're sitting, you can definitely use the floor and you would just be um, pressing into the floor with your fingers towards your body. Okay? So this is something you can do in the car while you're at a stop light, if you're waiting. We do so much with our wrists, with our forearms, texting, typing, writing. If you're a musician, please do these stretches because you're using those arm muscles even more. If you're a mechanic or a massage therapist, please do these stretches. So the extensors or the back of the arm, you stretch with the palm down and you bring those fingertips towards you. Thank you. 